Hey, beautiful souls. How you doing? It's Jeannie here, Too Much Woman. I wanted to give you four tools that are really helping me through this time as we navigate these uncharted waters together. I want to preface this by saying this video is in no way intended to make you feel pressured into doing anything or being anything. I think more than anything right now, the priority is to practice self-compassion and kindness and tenderness. I imagine everyone's walking around with a shirt that says fragile on it, so please do begin with that. But I also did want to give you a couple of tools that are really helping me uh, during this time. <clears throat> First and foremost, it's really, really important to acknowledge how we're feeling. I know this sounds like such a you know, eye rolling idea, but acknowledging how you're feeling is crucial. And if you've ever been given the silent treatment or if you were raised in a family that used the silent treatment as punishment, then you know how crucial this is. Um, imagine your feelings are like in this little thought bubble above your head, like this little scribble. I just want you to identify how you're feeling. So it's uh, saying something like, I feel sad. I feel anxious. I feel depressed. I feel worried. I feel stressed. Uh, be really cautious around the language that you're using. I hear a lot of people over identifying with how they're feeling, saying things like, I am stressed. I am angry. I am depressed. Um, the truth is you are not the emotion. You are the conduit for the emotion. And so um, whatever you're feeling is meant, your emotion is actually information meant for you to acknowledge and then to experience and then it's intended to move through you you're the conduit for it so just be mindful of the language you're using and you can acknowledge it by saying it out loud saying it to yourself writing it down uh, telling it to someone else but just make sure you acknowledge how you're feeling like check in and like how am i feeling right now give it a name give it a label because what it does is it disassociates you from the feeling it just kind of puts it in its context so number one acknowledge how you're feeling Number two is create a space where you can actually feel the feeling. Oh, I know. Do I have to? Yes. And the reason we have to is that if we take how we're feeling and we suppress it like a beach ball underwater, um, some ugly, there are some ugly repercussions to that. Like physically, we know what happens. We get headaches, chest pain, uh, stiffness. I get a sore throat. Um, it causes a lot of anxiety. Again, our emotions are energy in motion meaning they are meant to move. They're meant to come to us, be experienced, and move through us. And the only way it can move through us is to be expressed. So <clears throat> what are some helpful ways that you can feel the feelings? Well, um, I like to move my body. I like to dance. That's personally my go-to. I also like to take a bath. I run the water. I put some candles um, on. I light some candles, and I play music. And the music really is... Um, reflects however I'm feeling. Right now I'm going through a very nostalgic time. So it's like old songs, Louis Armstrong, helps me go to the place where I can feel the sadness that I'm feeling. And if I cry, I cry. And if I want to rage, Alanis Morissette's fantastic for that. And I take pillows and I pound them on my bed. By the way, my arms are like getting super toned from doing that. Um, but find a way to express how you're feeling. Maybe you like to write. Maybe you want to talk to someone. Maybe you like to sing it out. Maybe you want to play an instrument, um, um, maybe getting very physical, but find a way for the, ex the emotion to express itself. This is so crucial. So crucial. I could do a whole video just on that. So number one, just acknowledge, identify how you feel. Give it a label. I feel blank. Number two, give it some space to be felt. Number three, this is crucial because we can get stuck in number two in that feeling is you want to create a pattern interrupt. A pattern interrupt is simply, you know, if you are on a train track feeling sad and you are in the bath crying or you are raging or whatever, that's cool. You want to feel that. But at some point, we need to activate the power of choice so that we don't stay on that track and we want to literally switch tracks. And a pattern interrupt is literally that. Once we felt the feeling, we want to find an opportunity to consciously switch tracks. Now, there's lots of ways that you can do it, but I want to give you one specific way. Um, the, it's, and the reason I want to give you one specific way is because it's something everyone can do. It's in your power to do it. It's easy. You don't need a lot of time. Is I want you to create a pattern interrupt by literally visualizing a, a best experience. Now, here's what I mean. A lot of people go, oh, visualizing? Oh, I can't do that. If you've ever worried before or had stress before, 
if you've ever had a sexual fantasy before, you can visualize. Here's the power of visualization. And this could take a minute. It could take five. It could take as long as you want. But here's the power of it. Our thoughts are connected to our body. And our body doesn't know the difference between our imagined thought and reality. So you know this to be true. Like you can be worried about a job interview or um, a presentation you have to give tomorrow or stressed about a date or whatever. And our body will physically respond in present moment time like it would as if the event were happening. We start to sweat, we get dry mouth, we feel flushed. Uh, the same is true as if we're having a, a fantasy about someone. You could just think about someone and get like all hot and bothered, right? Because our body doesn't know the difference. It thinks it's happening in real time. Well, this is the power of visualization. So when we're on the track of an emotion um, that we don't want to still feel, because, you know, like just like depression, I've been depressed under the covers and you can stay on that track for a long time. But I choose once I've felt the feeling and I've given it some space to switch tracks using a pattern interrupt. So I literally visualize because you can do it anywhere. And I have a couple of go-to places. Uh, one is a beach and one is thinking about the one thing I really, really want to do when this is all over, which is be with some very special people and be able to hug them and laugh and eat and be together. And so I literally take myself to that place and I engage all of my five senses. This is really important. This isn't an intellectual thing. This is a, a whole body experience. So a pattern interrupt when you visualize is literally what am I seeing? What am I hearing? What am I feeling? What am I smelling? What am I tasting? And just immerse yourself in that experience. So take yourself to your happy place, to your good place, whatever that is, and do that for a couple of minutes. You could do it several times a day, but that literally sends a message to your nervous system that all is well. It calms down your entire body, even for just a few moments. And that actually helps boost your immune system. So there's so many benefits. So number one, acknowledge how you feel. Label it, give it a name. Number two, create a space where you can feel that feeling, even for just a little while. Number three, then you want to create a pattern interrupt so you can switch tracks. I happen to use visualization. You can use a million different things. But number four, and here's uh, one thing that's been really helpful for me. Um, we're going into week two for us here in Toronto, Canada. Um, I don't call it self-isolation. I like to call it nesting, but we are nesting for the second week. The first week was chaotic. It was like, oh my gosh, everyone off their schedules, what's happening, trying to get our bearings in this, in this new experience. But now that we're going into a second week, it's really important to create a little bit of predictability in an unpredictable situation. So the reason we feel so much fear and anxiety is because there's so much going on around us that we have no control of. Uh, there's a lot of unknowns and that creates a lot of fear. Our body and our mind is impacted by that. So what we want to do is create a little bit of predictability and safety, even in our small, small bubble, in our day-to-day -day routine and our rituals. So I loosely have a, a ritual or a routine for my day. It's not tied to anything pressure-filled or any times necessarily, but let me give you a rundown. Like I wake up in the morning, I have a little bit of me time, I, I pour my coffee, I have a little bit of time by myself. Then I go into a chunk of time, a couple of hours, where I'm productive, where I'm creating, maybe it's work, um, maybe it's organizing something in the house. It's just a little bit of productivity time, so I feel good. After that, it's time to move my body. Again, it doesn't have to be goal-oriented, but just moving my body. It could be just exercising, it could be dancing, it could be stretching, it could be going for a walk. But I know that this is going to create some feel-good chemicals in my body, so I always create space to move my body. Um, after that, there's a little bit of space where I usually take a bath. That's my me time. That's where I kind of regroup myself, where I feel my feelings, as I say. After that, um, we make dinner. Uh, my, I have two teenagers, and so we make dinner together, and then we watch a movie together. And at the end of my day, I have a little bit of time for myself. So that's loosely how I structure my day. And what this does is it sends a message to my nervous system that there's a little bit of predictability, there's some semblance of control, and that helps me to feel safe. It helps to calm my nervous system down and that vagus nerve that wants to like freak out. Um, so create some sort of routine in your day. I mean, I'm going to bed very, very late and I'm sleeping in. That's what my body wants to do. There's no shame around it, but I'm very consistent with the flow of my day as much as I can 
So I'm sending the message to my body that um, this is what we're going to do next. And this is what we're going to do next. And this is what we're going to do next. You don't have to be super uh, diligent about it. But just create a little bit of structure so that you have some predictability in your day. Hopefully this is helpful for you. Uh, let me know in the comments and um, big love your way. I want you to know that uh, we can do this together and all is well. And um, there is an other side to this and we're going to get there. We're going to get there. Big love your way.